I just liked it. Even as a baby, the games we used to play, I was the teacher. And even in primary, the compositions we used to write, what we'd like to be when you grow up, I was a teacher. So I made sure I realized my dream as a teacher. Even if you leave your house dull and bored, when you enter the class, they come with all sorts of stories and what happened in their houses and you have so many cases to solve. Some are pathetic, some are interesting. So that mixing with these innocent children makes life so interesting. Because when you're in school, you are their mother. So at the end of it all, we actually mold this child to be a complete citizen. And that is our joy. Some time back in 1998, I gave birth to a child, a very beautiful girl. When she was one year old, this child fell sick. So I decided to take her to hospital. So I found somebody waiting for me. And she said, your daughter is very much alive, though she's in the ICU, but out of danger. But we need to talk. So she first started by apologizing, but she said that when we checked for her HIV status, your daughter was found to be HIV positive. I was shocked. My daughter HIV positive from where? Because I couldn't imagine the virus could be with me. And she said, now, there are two options. Either the child got the virus from you, but it's not, it's not obvious. Or during delivery, the child might have gotten the virus in the labor ward. So I actually consoled myself, it was the latter. It could not be from me. When my husband learned that my daughter was HIV positive, that was where my life actually turned completely. Because the guy did not talk, he stood up, picked the girl and left. When he reached home, he just left the girl there and he went his way. Now from that time, he was no longer the same. So for the next about three months, this house was very, very boring, was very, very lonely. It first started with a chronic cough. Then, my opportunistic infections came very, very rapidly, very fast. Within about a week, I had lost a lot of weight. And finally, the blow came when I now got a very bad skin rash. My husband came. And he said, I want you to go for a HIV test. And I told him, I have no problem. I will go. But let us go, both of us. And he said, no, it's you to go. So I went to Aga Khan and drew my blood. When I went to the lab, I was told my results are with the doctor. I think I'm one of the persons who got my results in the worst way possible. There was no counseling, nothing. The doctor just ushered me to a seat. And she said, now, Beldina... I'm very sorry, but we've just confirmed what we were suspecting. That's how I was given my results. So I said, Doctor, what do you mean? And she said, I'm saying you're HIV positive. I was seated, but I got a blackout. Because what came to my mind were those days in Kenya when you, when, you, when you died from AIDS, you'd actually, after being put in a coffin, you'd be wrapped with a black polythene and then you'd be given a government vehicle to escort you until where you'll be buried so that you're properly disposed. Huh? They feared that you'd infect people on the way. So that is the picture that came to my mind. Already I was very thin, so the only thing remaining was to die. I cannot remember how I reached home, but somehow I found myself at home. So during those days, they used to give a certificate somehow. It used to be the results were in writing. So they wrote, the certificate and put that rubber stamp HIV positive. So I went with it. So when I reached home, I found my husband waiting for me and I gave him the certificate. So he looked at it and said, gosh, do you know what this means? And I said, the doctor said I'm HIV positive. Now, do you know what it really means? And I said, no, she didn't say any other thing. And she said, being HIV positive means you are dying. So. I can't sit here and wait to bury two people at a time. You must let me go and go on with my life. What was I to say? And he stood and walked out. 
this is a man I really loved with all my heart. And I thought in case of testing positive, we would actually sit down and look for a way forward. Here he is, he has taken off. And now the stigma now started in school. So even the friends that were so close to me now started keeping their distance. It's break time, there's usually tea break that all teachers take together in the staff room. So what I realized was that uh, cups had actually disappeared from the staff room. So I realized that teachers were picking cups. So during break time, they would come with those cups, take tea, wash the cup and go with it back. They didn't trust the cups in the staff room again. So the stigma actually continued. And the following year, I got a blow from the head teacher. He literally removed me from the classroom. He did not allocate me any classroom, no subject, nothing. So I would come in the morning, sign, and go somewhere behind the, 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 the staff room and sit there the whole day. Because if I'm in the staff room, no teacher will come. I deteriorated very, very fast. And in the year 2002, July, I actually went to full-blown AIDS. And I was bedridden and was like, I was ready to die. So I, I was in bed for about six months. So I landed in uh, Bagadi District Hospital. I stayed in hospital for about three days. There was no difference. But I had actually gone to hospital to die. As I was still anticipating death, a certain social worker came along and she had come to visit her patients. So in the event, she met me and asked me where I take my drugs. But I told her, I have no idea about drugs. And which drugs are you talking about? So immediately I was started on ARVs, together with the septrin, the opportunistic infection started going away slowly by slowly. Even this wound just dried up. So three months after taking the ARVs, I was fine. In the next three months, I was up and about. So ARVs actually gave me back my life. ARVs gave me back my health. And these drugs gave me back my job. 